like cat eye makeup is kind of like the Dolly mustache uh, for women, which is cool. I like that. Dolly's my homeboy. Okay, so I want to welcome you guys to my channel. Welcome. I'm Maggie, and I want to talk to you guys today about how sometimes we can get discouraged by our paintings and it can seem like it's a little hopeless and everybody's at a different skill level and so just be aware that a lot of it's patience it never goes away even when you get really good at painting like your favorite artists I'll assure you they don't always get it right and they have paintings that they feel like they really screwed up they have problems that they don't know how to fix right away you're not alone you don't have to be so worried but I'm gonna talk about some really common problems that people have with their paintings and some ways that you can fix it and work through it and learn from mistakes and maybe do better next time and kind of like get closer and closer to what you really wanna be making with your artwork. So the most common problem, problem number one, is that your composition has a problem with it. Maybe you're looking at it and you're like, you know, my table is going off the end of the page in a weird way. I'm not feeling grounded in my painting. I'm feeling like everything's in the top left corner and there's nothing in the rest of the painting. You might be feeling like there's just something wrong with that composition. And there are some great tools that you can use that are like guidelines that'll help you kind of figure out how you can fix the composition or at least get closer to a better composition. But realize that no guideline is a replacement for your artistic intuition. You know best. When you look at that painting, you're the only person who can decide if the composition is right or not, and no guideline is gonna tell you the answer. So the rule of thirds guideline is one that I use a lot, and you just divide the page into thirds horizontally and vertically, and you try to kind of make sure that things are lining up a little bit with those intersections and uh, so like this painting here in this image is an example of using the rule of thirds so you can see how things are happening in each of the intersections so uh, his hand is on the pillar that mountain is in the distance you know you can kind of you can understand how it's put together so if you apply the rule of thirds to your painting it may help you get a little closer to the right composition Another common problem that you may have with your painting is that the drawing or the proportions are not right. And this is really hard for a lot of beginners to get over. But be rest assured that even when you get to be a really good drafts person, when you get to be a really good artist, you will still have proportion kind of issues that arise up every once in a while. I like to think that every artist has their own kind of quirky, proportion mistakes that they always make and uh, and they just learn to compensate for it. So with my drawings, I know when I'm in a life drawing class, I know I'm going to make that head too big. I'm going to make those legs too big. And so I have to compensate and like make sure that the head is proportionately sized to the rest of the body, that the legs are proportionately sized. I just pay extra attention in those problem areas for myself. Anyway, whatever, whatever proportion mistakes or drawing mistakes that you have, you can fix them. And it's not gonna be that big of a deal. And there are two great ways that I like to solve this problem. And one of the more recent things I've been doing is using my cell phone to snap a picture of my painting and snap a picture of my reference and crop them exactly the same in my phone and then I can just flip back and forth between the two images and see, kind of play that game of what's different, you know? And I may see things that I wouldn't have seen just from visually looking at the reference and looking at my painting. Like it may just have been a little bit too hard of a comparison between the two, but it's much easier when you can literally flip back and forth and see the same things in the same place each time. So I recommend trying that. Uh, another thing that you can do that I actually, I usually start off with this method in a painting is I grid out the painting on the canvas. So I figure out my composition and whether my reference is something that I can take from a photo that I took or uh, a photoshopped uh, amalgamation of images that I've made 
or, um, or a still life image or something, you can grid that out, and I like to do it with a measurement tool. So not just eyeballing it, but literally ruler, measure it out, and then proportionately transfer that to your finished canvas. And if you grid it out correctly, and you transfer it from your reference to your finished canvas, then you should find that things are lining up better than if you had tried to eyeball it without a grid. So this is something you can do to try to fix a painting that has some screwed up proportions or drawing issues, um, but it's also something you could do to just start off the painting the right way. Another common problem is color with a painting. Paintings are complicated, and there's lots of factors to take into account here. Without getting into it too deeply, color value is how dark your colors are, so like from white to black, and Color saturation is how bright your color is, so from like gray to a highly saturated color. And Hugh describes the color of the color that you chose, so whether it's like a red color, a blue color, a purple color, whatever. There's a lot to know with the world of color, and so I don't wanna to get too deeply into that because that just takes a lot of practice and trial and error. But what you can do to kind of tweak and fix a painting that has some color issues is you can get out your sketchbook, take some colored pencils or watercolors, or if you have some primed paper, you can do an acrylic or an oil painting study. But try to take your composition and simplify it down in a study, like a thumbnail, like just a little guy. Uh, try to simplify your colors down to just like five to eight shapes. And this is something that, you know, I was taught um, at UNH where I went to school for art, but I also learned from Catherine Kehoe because I did a workshop with her a few summers ago. Catherine Kehoe's paintings, I'm just gonna flash a few of her paintings here. She has a gift with simplifying a painting down to only the most uh, necessary color shapes. And we made a lot of paintings in the workshop I did with her um, that just simplified it down two, five or eight shapes, you know, uh, really getting down to the nitty gritty of what you need as a viewer to understand the scene. It may seem really difficult for beginners, but you will get used to it and it will make you a better painter if you practice this. And keep in mind that the color shapes are not limited to the objects that you are coloring. It should transcend into the rest of the scene. So for example, you may have like a blue vase in a painting and maybe the left side of the blue vase is sort of purplish and dark and maybe the shadow that it leaves on the table that it's on is also kind of dark and maybe, maybe it's even like more red but it's dark. You can simplify that color shape into one shape. So it should go from the vase onto the table as a continuous color shape. And if you practice this with your drawings, you can do this with pencil sketching, you know, black and white pencil sketching. Practice opening your mind and seeing the bigger picture. Really can help a lot. The last problem that you can run into is the hardest one, and that is that just something doesn't feel right. And maybe you've got a great drawing, it's accurate, the colors are vibrant, it's good, but you're looking at it and you still hate it. And why do you hate it? You don't know. This is gonna be different for everybody because everybody's got a different creative process. But I like to think that every little nugget of inspiration that you get that leads you to create a painting gives you a glimpse into your creative being and what you really want to give when you make artwork. So if you try to get back to the state of mind you were in when you were inspired to make this painting. What did you see that inspired you? What did you think that inspired you? What kind of feelings or images made you feel passionate and excited enough to actually make a painting about it? And if you think through that, then you may find that you, you can get back to that somehow. Maybe, maybe there's just more planning that's needed for this painting. Maybe it's on the right track, but it just needs just a little more planning, a little more care with subject matter or reference imagery. Something just may be a little off right from the planning stage. 
So try going back to that state of mind you were in when you got inspired. Another thing is sometimes the painting was worth doing and it just didn't pan out the way you wanted it to and you just put it down for now and you solve the problem later. You know, every professional artist has paintings that fail or they feel like they failed and you put them down, you put them away, you see how you feel a week from now, a month from now, you get back to it, try to solve the problem again. Hopefully in that time that you were not working on that painting, you were working on a new painting or something else that may have given you a little insight. Maybe you just need a little space from the painting. Maybe it's just, you just are too close to it. You're not seeing the big picture. Uh, you need to get away from it for a while so that when you look at it again, it's with fresh eyes. Well, don't be discouraged by your painting no matter what the issues are with it. Every painting is a learning experience and they always say that you need to make a thousand terrible paintings before you can make a good one. So. Don't be discouraged, it's a learning process. Be patient with yourself. It doesn't mean that you have no talent. It doesn't mean that you don't have a good vision. It means you just need a little bit of practice. So be patient. That's the number one key here is patience. So good luck and I hope that you have a lot of success with your painting and make sure you take breaks when you need to but you get right back into it and you remember why you're doing this. You have a gift to give, give it to the world. We need you. Okay, have a creative day. Thank you so much for watching, bye. <laughs>